What we're going through with the coronavirus response and the lockdowns and the maskings and the closures and the, the end of jobs and the end of school and the handouts and all of it, the self-isolation, all of it is tantamount to torture according to Amnesty International's own definition and categories of what counts towards coercive or torturous treatment towards prisoners of war. And in this current paradigm that we're living under with this supposed global pandemic, I believe what they are doing is capitalizing on that psychology that they understand about the doctor-patient relationship. And they are making us all into patients and treating us accordingly. This, of course, is another method of torturing someone. This should be definitely against the Geneva Conventions. It should be against any form of human decency to treat someone who is not sick as if they are sick. There are psychological conditions named for that. One of them is Munchausen syndrome, Munchausen syndrome by proxy, where a parent gets so much control and so much attention from having a sick child that the parent makes the child sick by giving them little doses of poison or via other methods. This seems to me what's happening on a, a gigantic scale with the coronavirus response. The article begins, there is one place in which one's privacy, intimacy, integrity, and inviolability are guaranteed, one's body. The process of chronic disease invades, defiles, and desecrates this shrine. It does so publicly, enhancing the sufferer's sense of helplessness and utter humiliation. Hence the all-pervasive, long-lasting, and frequently irreversible effects and outcomes of long-term intractable illness. The medical system, the medical tyranny, the techno-fascists, that's the final frontier for them. They want to conquer our body. They want to conquer our minds. In a way, the torture victim's own body is rendered his worst enemy. It is corporeal agony that compels the patient to mutate, his identity to fragment, his ideals and principles to crumble. The body becomes an accomplice of the affliction, an uninterruptible channel of communication, a treasonous, poisoned territory. They are considering all of us patients now. They are asking us to behave as if we are contagious, as if we are broken, as if we are dangerous, and this is all done publicly, like he says in this paragraph. Even though we are not actually sick, the powers that be are invading our body with their health care. They are asking us to demonstrate, wear masks, use hand uh, sanitizer, get in line, stay six feet away from each other. And look what he says happens. Our identities fragment. We mutate. Our ideals and principles crumble. And who hasn't felt that happening around them? Everybody is under at least low-grade stress, if not starting to break from the extreme psychological manipulation they're putting us through, along with, of course, the economic stuff, the financial stuff, the interpersonal stuff, social stuff, and, and real health concerns that are either being overblown or ignored. They're locking us into this dance that a chronically ill person has with the medical system, the helpless relationship, the dependent relationship that they have with that system. It fosters a humiliating dependency of the abused on medicines, doctors, and bureaucracies. The impersonal character of modern healthcare objectifies the patient, further adding to his or her alienation. As he sees it, he is rendered bestial not by the inadequacies of society and medicine, but by his own flesh. I certainly see that happening. The objectification of people, it's it's near complete now. We are alienated from our bodies because we are not sick, yet we must behave as if we are. We're being degraded. We're being dehumanized. We are being rendered bestial, where our main concerns now, whether we really realize it or not, are survival-based. And we are getting to see one another as if we're dangerous or enemies or competitors, instead of being more or less brothers and sisters in, in our countries and in our communities. It's tragic what they're doing. And it goes along with the Amnesty International report on tortures and description of torture, where they described 
Biederman and his study of prisoners of war. And he said that the Chinese and the communists were not magic when they broke the prisoners. They weren't using any special techniques. They were just inducing the three Ds, dependency, debility, and dread. Can you see that in the coronavirus response? Can you see that in a chronically ill patient, their dependency on the doctors? Let's continue reading Sam Vaknin's article. Illness robs the patient of the most basic modes of relating to reality and thus is the equivalent of cognitive death. Space and time are warped by sleep deprivation. The self, I, is shattered. The chronically sick have nothing familiar to hold on to. Family, home, personal belongings, loved ones, language, name. Gradually they lose their mental resilience and sense of freedom. They feel alien, unable to communicate, relate, attach, or empathize with others. Terminal or debilitating illness splinters early childhood grandiose narcissistic fantasies of uniqueness, omnipotence, invulnerability, and impenetrability. But it enhances the fantasy of merger with an idealized and omnipotent, though not benign, other, the medical doctor, often the inflictor of agony. And there we have Dr. Fauci, here we have some experiments from Dr. Mengele, and here we have Families trying to cope with the fact that they've got their elderly loved ones locked up in nursing homes where they can't even visit them, can't help them through their illnesses, can't help them through anything with dignity. These COVID response officials are, are doing exactly what the medical system would do to a chronically ill patient. They are hooking us in so that their worldview is the dominant one. They are scaring us that if we don't behave and we don't listen to them, then things will get worse. They make us complicit. They make us participate in, in the torture because we're scared, because this is about our health, because we feel like we don't have enough knowledge. So they break down our ability to take care of ourselves, to continue. Chronic disease has no cutoff date. The sounds, the voices, the smells, the sensations reverberate long after each episode has ended, both in nightmares and in waking moments. The patient's ability to trust the rationality and benevolence of the world has been irrevocably undermined. Social institutions are perceived as precariously poised on the verge of an ominous Kafka-esque mutation. Nothing is either safe or credible anymore. Surely you can see the obvious way that is playing out in all of our lives now. All of us dependent on this system that isn't making any sense. And it's very precarious. We don't know what they're going to do next. In the case of a chronically ill patient, they don't know if their body is going to take a turn for the worse suddenly, if changing a medicine will hurt them. But they have to do what the doctors say, not only because uh, they, they are accustomed to depending on experts but because there's not another alternative in our society they've literally cut off other routes we can sort of use some natural remedies but they they vilify that in the mainstream media and in the quote-unquote mainstream science in Canada you can't choose to go to a private clinic unless you leave the country you can't get around their prescriptions their idea of what is the right course of action for you. And think of the COVID response. 15 days at first, then 30 days, just, just a little longer, just wear a mask. This might last for years. This is the new normal. They let us into big box stores, but they don't let us into small family restaurants or bakeries or hardware stores. They, they are releasing prisoners, dangerous prisoners, out into the streets, but they are arresting people who are not complicit with the medical tyranny who simply don't want to wear a mask, who simply don't want to use hand sanitizer, who simply state out loud that they don't believe the numbers. They don't believe this is a dangerous pandemic. 